Richard Garfield, and Rudy agree about the secondary market, let's discuss. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. You know, when I was a kid and I started playing Magic the Gathering, it was like a struggle. You had to, I had an allowance, right? And I would use that to buy packs. So it was like one pack a week or some crap like that in the early 90s, 94, 95, you know, 1994. Before Ice Age, I started during Revised. And, um, you know, it was a struggle. Like, it took time to build your deck. Not everybody had everything. And, you know, when you won, we battled with anti, right? So when you'd win, you'd either get better cards or you'd get you'd lose and you'd get worse cards because somebody would get a card that you antied up, right? So it was like it was like a battle, like a uphill struggle to make your deck better and to win more and so on and so forth, right? And I kind of liked that idea. I didn't know anybody who played proxies. I don't know why you'd play proxies. Like, um, how do you have pride in a proxy deck? That's kind of weird. It's also like, I mean, I never played Fallout, like New Vegas, with wanting the All-American in the beginning. You know, like, even though you can get it pretty early at level 13, you still had to work to level 13 to get it, right? You don't want the 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 freaking the mini nukes in that game right away right you don't want the the best weapons right away and you know what you shouldn't have the best weapons right away it should take the you know time to get there it shouldn't be an instantaneous like i don't know what's the word i'm looking for uh entitlement situation you know people shouldn't feel entitled to these as game pieces i've never heard this term until um the professor and like saying that all game pieces should be five cents and blah 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 you know um freaking richard carfield never intended the game to be cheap and to be uh like monopoly or risk or something where everybody gets all of the game pieces immediately and Honestly, I have, um, hold on, I, I, I have proof here. Let's check it out. Okay, so here's my proof. This is the Magic the Gathering business plan. This is like the prospectus that, um, right here, is the prospectus, the sub subscriber package cover lever, <laughs> lever, letter. Uh, March 19th, 1993. Please allow me to introduce myself, Peter Atkinson, Wizards of President of Wow, I can't talk today. President of Wizards of the Coast and Garfield Games, two companies that have allied themselves together in a corporate effort to bring exciting and innovative products to the dynamic and rapidly growing international gaming community. You now have in your care a copy of Investor's Kit for Garfield Games. Enclosed within this kit is a business plan, investment information, and some promotional material for our first game, Mana Flash. Mana Flash is Magic the Gathering before there was a Magic the Gathering. Mana Flash is already in production. We will obtain a key marketing advantage if we can release this game before the Gen Con Fair in August 1993. They weren't kidding. To meet this window, we need to raise at least 80 grand by the end of April 93. I wish I was in 80 in April 93 with 80 grand, you know. There will also be there will there are also still investment opportunities in Wizards of the Coast. If you or anyone you know might be interested in getting involved in blah, 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 I must say I have a high degree of confidence in this game. Thank you in advance for your serious consideration. Mana Flash. B uh, Garfield Games Business Plan. Dated March 1st, 1993. Okay. Now, um, let's see. There was a particular line that I liked. Uh, I, well, not like that. That was that felt extremely poignant. Okay, or let's see. <laughs> so yeah, you got a summary, the gaming industry. Let me just find this. Give me a second, please. Okay, in this paragraph that you'll see at the top of the screen, 
Garfield's Games initial product line. The Deckmaster series will introduce a new type of game. The first Deckmaster game, known by the working title of Manaflash, is a hybrid game that combines the imaginative vision and strategy of role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons with the collectability of trading cards. Uh, companies like Microsoft and TSR have already proved the potential for a company that can create a market for a completely new type of product and then build on that demand through good planning and management. All right. So. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons style game. With the collectability of trading cards. So. Everybody chooses to ignore that with the collectability of trading cards part, but it's right there. It's in the in the the it's in the freaking business plan since the very beginning. So to have this this perspective that the secondary market doesn't matter and the collectors ruin the game, you're wrong. Richard Garfield wanted it to be this way. I don't know. I don't know currently if this is the way that he wanted the game to continue into but i'll tell you this is what it was created to be rudy talking about the importance of the secondary market yeah he's he's correct the the secondary market is extremely important it drives a lot of hype it drives that whole like you know i gotta keep going i gotta keep collecting i gotta keep up i gotta compete type of perspective and honestly, without that, it's just Monopoly. We'll whip it out, play it with family, and then put it back in the closet. Because it's all game pieces. Right, guys? Right, guys? I don't know. Take care. Have a great day. Like, it's, it's funny when I talk about the secondary market how I get yelled at in the comments. But I, I, I bet you, I know that it's all new people. It's not people who have been around. It's not people who were there in the beginning. It's not people who were there for 10 years. It's not even people who were there for five years. It's all new people who feel that they should be entitled to the game from the very beginning. And they're the, one that wizard, they're the ones that wizards are going after now. They're going after these people who have been there for five years, uh, five to seven years, and spend 500. <laughs> what kind of crazy perspective is that? Over five years, have you spent 500 to to $1,000? I mean, people spend that in a month with Magic the Gathering. It's it's crazy. I don't know anyone who fits that that um, cut that they're talking about. I don't know. I, look, all this is to say that that whole perspective of the, the game pieces should all be cheap for everyone all at once is just incorrect. This is not the way it was intended to be. I mean, you can view it that way, but it's not Monopoly or Risk. It was intended to be collectible. It was intended to have expensive cards that you, that me, that everyone isn't able to just get right away. Okay? I know some people can. They can afford it. That's a different story. Anyway, remember to like and sub. If you're going to buy any cards, you remember to use my TCG player affiliate link in the description. It is free and easy to use. You click on it. You shop like normal. Thank you for your help. Check out my Patreon. Um, we got some cool things happening there and more cool things happening there. I know it's not as active as other Patreons, but I try to make up with that um, with uh, interesting stuff. Like I have uh, old school breaks. Like I did the APAC lens. That's um, coming to video soon. I don't know if it's up already. Um, yeah, just uh, guys, take care. Have a lovely day. Peace. Remember... This game was meant to be like an accumulation, a, a, a long term, I don't want to use the word war versus battle, but it's a war. It's long term. It's not just the battles, the pieces, you know? All right. Anyway, peace. It, peace. Man. Game over, man. Game over. What the fuck are we going to do now? What are we going to do? Maybe we can build a fire, sing a couple of songs, huh? Why don't we try that?